So you want to tell your French conversation group all about what you did last weekend. Or maybe you want to write an email to the friends that you made on your last visit to France updating them about what's been happening in your life. On both situations, you're talking about le passé, the past, which means that you're probably wondering which grammatical tense am I supposed to use? Is it le passé composé? Is it l'imparfait or le passé sans? Find out once and for all with today's lesson. So let's say you have a friend who's been to France recently. How can you talk about it in French? First, you need a tense for the past. But is it l'imparfait, elle allait en France? Or le passé composé, elle est allée en France? Le passé simple, maybe, elle alla en France. Or even le passé récent, elle vient d'aller en France. Which one is it? Well, it's going to depend on the situation, but some of these are more correct than others. Let's start with the easy answer. Le passé récent and le passé simple. Le passé récent is literally the recent Past, le passé récent. It is using venir de plus infinitif. Venir de plus infinitif. It is for something that just happened. We use it a lot every time we mean I just did something. For instance, je viens de marcher. I just walked. Je viens de marcher. Repeat after me. Je viens de marcher. Again, je viens de marcher. One more time, je viens de marcher. Good. It is particularly present in spoken French since written French can cover a long time between the time you write something and the time someone read it. But it is not slang or familiar French either. I made a full lesson about it. You'll find the link at the end of today's video. On the other side of the spectrum, we have le passé simple. Le passé simple only really appears in written French. Passé simple is funny because it means simple past. Passé simple, literally. But it is far from simple. You probably remember it from school. A few decades ago, maybe, it is nous fume, for example, nous fume, for we were, or vous fit, vous fit, for you did. This tense is never, ever, ever used in modern spoken French. Yes, you might still find it in books, especially old books. Jacques, vous fit là une belle chose. Jacques, vous fit là une belle chose. Or sometimes in songs or poetry. Nous fumons toutes deux et le départ, maman. Or in a period piece. But they're either old, poetic, or very formal. No, in real, everyday spoken French, the tenses that we use the most are le passé composé and l'imparfait. L'imparfait is used for habits or long actions in the past. We find it in something like je marchais, I was walking, or I used to walk, je marchais, je marchais. It is basically a past continuous term with was plus ing. It is roughly the same. I also made a whole lesson on this precise tense and you will find a link to it again at the end of this video. We'll cover a few more examples about l'imparfait in a minute, but let's take a moment to look at its very simple conjugation. It is basically the root of the verb and then the sound est. So for the verb to walk, we have je marchais. Je marchais for I was walking. Repeat after me. You can notice here that the S at the end of marchais is silent. Repeat after me. Je marchais. Again, je marchais. Then we have tu marchais. You were walking. Tu marchais. Again, notice that the S at the end of marchais is silent again. Repeat after me. Tu marchais. Again, tu marchais. Then we have elle marchait. She was walking. And here we have a silent T at the end of marchais. Elle marchait. Again, elle marchait. 
You can notice here, as I said, that it's just like adding the sound A at the end and it kind of works. Then we have nous marchons. Ooh, here, as you notice, the A was replaced by a yon sound with a nasal on. Nous marchions. Repeat after me. Nous marchions. The S is silent again. Nous marchions. Good. Then we have vous marchiez. Again, here, as you can notice, the E sound that I mentioned at the beginning is replaced by a Y sound with the silent Z. Vous marchiez. Again, vous marchiez. And at the end, elle marchait. Elle marchait. They used to walk. Here, if you're not familiar with this conjugation, E and T at the end are silent. Repeat after me. Elle marchait. Again, elle marchait. Good. And that's it for almost all the verbs. Simple, right? Well, it is simple for a French conjugation. So the endings are, for je, it is est. For tu, est. For il, it is est. For nous, it is yon. For vous, it is ye. And for il, it is est. Now let's get back to our final tense. It is le passé composé. The question is when should you use it? Well, it is used to describe specific actions that take place at a precise time. Unfortunately, sometimes it can be confused with l'imparfait. Think of it as the difference between the English simple past and the continuous past. For le passé composé, for example, we can say j'ai vécu en France en 2012. I lived in France in 2012. That's the translation. And then for l'imparfait, en 2012, je vivais en France. In 2012, I was living in France. That's the main technique that you can quickly use to decide whether to use le passé composé or l'imparfait. Le passé composé is a French tense to talk about the past and it looks like the English present perfect, but even though they share the same structure, it is not used in the same way. It is closer to the past simple in English. You know, like j'ai marché, that would translate into I walked. It is very, very common in both written and especially spoken French. Le passé composé is called composé, literally compound past, because it is made of two parts. We have first l'auxiliaire, l'auxiliaire, the auxiliary word that can be être, to be, or avoir, to have. And we have le participe passé, the past participle, le participe passé. For example, je suis allé en France, I went to France, je suis allé en France, or j'ai acheté un souvenir, I bought a souvenir, j'ai acheté un souvenir. Here we have the auxiliary être, être with je suis, and the one avoir with j'ai. And then we have the past participles with aller and acheter. The passé composé is not hard, but it can be intimidating. French school children can take a long time to master this tense when they first learn about it. But I believe in you. And this is not the confusing part yet. Especially since it is so close to the present perfect in its construction. No, the confusing part will come next week in a lesson all about le passé composé with its conjugation, its exceptions and lots of special cases. Let's go into detail now. Le passé composé is used for actions in the past with a very clear starting point and or a clear ending point even if it's not explicitly mentioned. For example, nous sommes partis en vacances. We went on holiday. So there was a day when we packed our bags and left home to go on holiday. Or j'ai commencé à apprendre le français au collège. I started to learn French when I was in middle school. You have a clear starting point. Sometimes le passé composé is used to cut a longer action that is in l'imparfait, especially with quand, 
coming when in French. There's a silent D at the end and the U is silent as well. Quand. For example, je dormais quand tu as appelé. I was sleeping when you called. I was sleeping, je dormais, is a long action. It is in l'imparfait. Quand tu as appelé, that's the shorter action. Quand tu as appelé, this is at le passé composé. Je dormais quand tu as appelé. Another example. Quand elle a commencé, elle était optimiste. When she started, she was optimistic. Quand elle a commencé, that is the short time, so that's at le passé composé. Quand elle a commencé, elle était optimiste. This is the longer time. Elle était optimiste. L'imparfait is used, as we said, for longer actions and habits in the past. But the confusing part, unfortunately, is that le passé composé can be used that way as well. The difference is blurry, but it is all about your intent. For example, j'écoutais beaucoup cette chanson en 2004. I was listening to that song a lot in 2004. J'écoutais beaucoup cette chanson en 2004. We have an imparfait here. And the idea is that I was a big fan then. The other option here for the tense is J'ai beaucoup écouté cette chanson en 2004. I listened to that song a lot in 2004. And here the idea is that now it's done. I listened to it so much, but that's over now. I am done. Another example with the two tenses. Il y a deux ans, tu allais en France. Il y a deux ans, tu allais en France. Here we have an imparfait. Two years ago, you were going to France. So the meaning here is exactly two years ago, you were on your way between here and France. Remember? So you think about the travel and all on this precise time two years ago. So let's use le passé composé now. Il y a deux ans, tu es allé en France. Il y a deux ans, tu es allé en France. You went to France two years ago. Here the content is that now it's done, but that happened at time. You went on this trip to France. We're thinking about the whole trip, but now it's over. I'm not thinking about anything in particular. I made a whole lesson of it. And yes, it is a bit old now, but I will still give you the links to it at the end of this video. Now, I can tell you about other tenses, such as le plus que parfait or l'imparfait du subjonctif, but they're really not as frequent as the others. But still, you can find more about these tenses in the blog post for today's lesson, where I give you some extra tips as well as a fully written lesson that you can download. It is on my website. You will find the link below the video in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. But now I have to say that we barely scratched the conjugation of le passé composé. We need to dive deeper. How to build it? How can you use it in spoken French with confidence? The thing is, it is simple at first, but then the exceptions keep piling up. And then it gets more and more and more complicated and can be overwhelming. So this is why I wanted to cover it step by step and it needs a full video lesson. So we're going to cover that next week. But for now, félicitations because French past tenses and le passé composé are tricky, but you are on your way to master it. I made a playlist of lessons for you as the next step. You will learn more about venir de. We're going to dive deeper into l'imparfait. And as soon as the next video is complete, you will learn about le passé composé as well and how to conjugate it correctly. If you want, you can also get another angle on today's topic with my lesson on how to choose a past tense in French. Just click here on the playlist and I will see you in the next video. Allez, à tout de suite.